setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. It's Political Tuesday, and this is the day that I get to talk about politics and how it affects taxes and business and our personal lives. I have talked a lot over the last few weeks and months about the tax reform that Trump and the GOP have been talking about for a long time now. However, we've seen no action, and I think that's the biggest problem is no action. And the reason why we haven't seen any action is because we've got a Congress and a Senate that are so divided politically that it is causing a stalemate within Congress of people not working together to get things done. And when that happens, it creates a lot of problems for the American people because we are sitting here wanting to know what do we do for next year or, or two years from now? How do we plan? What's going to happen? What's going to happen in business? And so we sit here not knowing. How can we plan? We can't really do anything except to go with the as is, what we have already going on. So we have a very complicated Internal Revenue Code that creates a lot of problems for Americans. And Americans are getting tired of this complicated code because every time that they sign on their tax return, they're signing under penalty and perjury, and they have no idea how those taxes are figured. So when you don't know what's going on with your tax return, that makes Americans scared. And since every item that you put as a deduction on your income tax return becomes an auditable item by the IRS, that even makes you more scared. So when you get that letter from the IRS saying that they want to talk about some stuff, it makes everybody scared. They call our office in a panic because they don't know what it's all about. And they don't even read the letter because they're scared to read the letter to know what's going on. We should not have that type of tax system where it scares Americans and it puts them into a legal liability with the Internal Revenue Service in the United States government. And where very quickly it can be turned into a criminal action depending on the misunderstanding or what happened with that tax return. So Congress sits there. And they keep bragging that they're going to do all this tax reform, but basically what they're talking about is just reducing the tax rates, not changing the tax code. Because you know that once it gets on the floor for debate and gets off into all of its little committees, they begin to whittle at it because they've got lobbyists pounding on their door. You can't take that away from us. That needs to be on the tax return. Mortgage interest needs to be on the tax return. When really it doesn't because that's not why you buy a house to have tax deductions. You buy it to make a profit when you go to sell it. You buy a house to live in, to make it a home, to have a place for your family. So we need to get away from this thought process that it's a tax deduction because basically that tax deduction can be turned into an audit very quickly. Your charitable deductions can be turned into an audit at a snap of a finger. And we can go line by line of that itemized deductions and also your rental income and everything else that you do on your tax return, your stock buy and everything, capital gains, that sits there like a devil staring out at you. We can do a lot better than this. We can make it a very simplified tax reporting system without making it an audible situation by the IRS. You and I, we pay a lot of taxes when we have our income. If you want to have a business, set up a corporation, set up a business. 
Look at it that way. Reduce the tax rates on the on the business. On the individual side, make it a fair and balanced tax rate system for everybody. But we can't have this scare tactics used by the Internal Revenue Service on tax tax uh, payers. We can't have that because 74,000 pages of a tax code is way too much. It's gotten out of hand because what happens is that when a tax issue needs to be changed or added, it gets passed by the Congress. Then it goes over to the Senate, and then they pass it or write it up and send it back to the Congress. But at some point in time, it ends up on the president's desk, and he signs it into law. It then goes to the Internal Revenue Service, and then they interpret it. It's that interpretation part that makes it very complicated. And it makes it very difficult for people to understand what they hear is happening in Congress, and when it finally gets to the Internal Revenue Service and it's interpreted, interpreted, it then becomes a complicated tax code. Just on the Affordable Care Act, there were 21 tax laws in that. 21 tax issues in that ACA, and the president said, oh, it's not a tax, it's a fee. No, those are taxes that the Supreme Court finally said, yes, those are taxes. But why did health care need 21 different tax code changes? What does that have anything to do with health care? So we have this issue where uh, uh, Speaker Ryan is out there going from place to place touting his tax plan, but we know very well that once it gets passed from the various committees and subcommittees in the Congress, and when it finally gets over to the Senate, it's going to be a watered-down tax bill that just deals with tax rates, and that is not tax reform. Tax reform is when you go in and gut the tax code. That's what needs to happen. 74,000 pages down to 25,000. Come on, guys. Tell the truth to the American people and say that it is not real tax reform because that's not what is happening at the moment. Then when you get over to the Senate side, you have senators who do do not want Trump to have tax reform done. There are Republican senators there that hate Trump so much, and they are the elitists of the Senate who think they know better than the American people know and what the president knows. So they're going to do their own thing because they they have become so political that they no longer represent their constituents, but rather they represent their own political agenda. And that's when we get back to the point of where this nation was founded, taxation without representation. We have a problem, people, and we need to solve it as quickly as possible. ACA needs to be gone. Those 21 taxes tied to ACA need to be eliminated, deleted, gone, bye-bye, hasta la vista. But instead, politicians are going to be politicians and they are going to play with this tax bill very politically. And then the American people lose once again. We can't keep doing that. Listen, I've got a song by Doug DeForest who's up for a Grammy nomination this year. It's called... Don't try that on me. And I would say, hey, Congress, don't try that on me. I've had it. You know, I believe that you're the man who thinks that you know the man. Turn the water into wine better than I do. But now I see you for who you are. Standing on a righteous platform, waiting for some other fool. 
see me and the man who saved my soul when I was younger. We talk most every day. What makes you think you know forgiveness better than the man who put it in my soul? I think it's time that you should listen. Do you know? Don't try that on me. That won't work anymore. I just see the man behind the mask counting cash on the floor. You say you work. For me to say, I didn't want things to end this way, but I guess God had me see what you are, and now He tells me what to say. You come, don't try that on me. That won't work anymore. I just see the man behind the mask counting cash on the floor. You say you worry. Your grace. Why you got a big smile on your face? But deep beneath it all, I know this ain't about what you came here for. No. Okay, come on, Congress. All that we're asking for is for you to do your job. That's it. Just get to your office, sit down, and write some bills on taxation. Come to an agreement and get it done. We're tired of it. So that was "Don't Try That on Me." It was done by Doug DeForest, and he's up for three Grammys. Nom- he's nominated for three Grammy uh, in the first phase of the Grammy nominations. If any of you are out there. And are a Grammy voter, vote for Doug DeForest. He has one in country gospel and in two other categories. I don't remember what they are. But vote for him. He's a great singer. Now, I noticed over the past couple of days that Nancy Pelosi has been out there putting down everything that the Republicans are trying to do over in Congress on tax reform and also health care reform. So she came out yesterday, excuse me, she came out yesterday saying how awful and bad that the president is doing on this health care. Unfortunately, she comes out with no solutions of her own. The whole Democratic Party has come out with nothing, nada, zilcho. But they stand to the sides and they complain and they moan and they groan and they say that the world is going to end and people are losing their health care, which is a lie. And they stand there like they are better than everybody else in this country. But they come up with no solutions. I have not heard of one proposal to fix ACA by the Democrats. Not one single one. 
Now, they have had eight years, and they knew that ACA was failing. They saw that the exchanges, exchanges were going out of business. They saw that insurance companies were moving out of the markets. They saw that Americans' new debt is medical health care debt because the deductibles are so high, and that hospitals are now requiring patients to pay up front to cover that deductible. <coughs> Excuse me. But they did nothing. Instead, they stand there and they moan and they groan, but they have no solutions. I don't like it when people have no solutions. When I go to my staff and I say, listen, we have a problem here. How are we going to solve it? And they come back to me with answers and solutions. But in Congress, it's just a pointing and blame game that the Democrats are doing. What I would like to see, and what I encourage Nancy Pelosi to do is shut up, sit down at the table with the Republicans, and hammer out a health care plan. Do something for America instead of your political agenda. Because your political agenda right now stinks and it's failed the American people on health care. In fact, me personally... I would prefer that Congress have nothing to do with my health care. Because when they have their hands on health care, they make it political. And when politics gets involved in making decisions on health care, it fails the American people every single time. So we need to do something better. If you want to change ACA, sit down. Identify what the issues and the problems are that are facing Americans with their health care. And come up with a solution. But if you're going to stand to the side of the table and not come to the table and sit down, then it's worthless. You are not representing your people if you have no solutions. Present them. Speak out about your solutions. Don't come to the American people and complain and telling lies. It doesn't work that way. The American people de- deserves a whole lot better in what you, than what you're giving them right now. Trying to scare Americans and trying to put Americans down and trying to call, the, call them names. and try, I mean, this is a worthless tactic. We paid you a nice salary every year to go to Congress and represent our needs. <clears throat> and you don't you don't ever do it. What you do is you go there and you play politics. The American people specifically told you what they wanted done in these four years. And instead of doing what the American people want, you do what you want. And what your political party wants. This is ridiculous. So we have a problem with Congress. So I'm telling Nancy Pelosi and I'm telling Senator Schumer, get to the table and start doing something. Start working with the Republicans and come up with a solution to the issues that are hurting Americans right now. Or... Just dissolve ACA and let Americans decide what they want to do with health care. Because right now ACA is failing. I hate failure. And I hate to see people make excuses for failure. So Schumer, Pelosi, act like big boys and girls. Go to the big table where the big people are, where the grown-ups are, and start working out the deal on health care. That's all it takes. Put politics to the side. Don't stand there and say you're not going to do this and you're not going to do that. Start doing your job and work with other members of Congress. But other than that, let's go out and have a great day. This has been Political Political Tuesday with Michael Lodge. Have a great day, and I'll talk with you very, very soon. I look 
outside the dawn's first light Sipping coffee, what a sight To watch the morning wake up through the trees Lake Paradise just seemed to say Hope you're feeling good today The birds were singing melodies for free Now I ain't one to dwell too long On why life turned out right, not wrong But mysteries I ponder time and time This blessing could have been a curse The one thing that I know I sure believe I've got more than I can dream in front of me For every turn that wasn't good I met it with I think I could And looked up to the sky from time to time No one can live perfectly Especially a fool like me That somehow kept good fortune in my sight Million bucks. I me, I never had that luck. But money never helped you find your smile. You see, I found mine in a big glass door that leads out to my own lake shore. It changes with the seasons all the time. If this is all I ever have, then I'll be Whispered, hey, I knew you could. That's why I look up to the sky from time to time. Well, no one can live perfectly, especially a fool like me that somehow kept good fortune in his sight. The truth is something I chose not to find. I guess I'm living right. Oh, I guess I'm living right. This is brought to you by Lodge Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518 or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. World of Business and Taxes.